Here is a liar. I have a message from the Lord today and I'm sure it's going to bless your life. It's going to change your life. If you have a Bible, I want you to open to Romans chapter 12 and verse 11. Lord of all, thank you so much. God bless you. All right, Romans 12 verse 11. I'm going to be reading from the Passion Translation. The Bible says, be enthusiastic to serve the Lord. Keeping your passion toward him boiling hot. Radiate with the glow of the Holy Spirit and let him fill you with excitement as you serve him. Romans chapter 12 and verse 11. Tonight, for a very few minutes, I'm going to be speaking on passion killers. Passion killers. Can't we just pray? Thank you, Father, for your word. Because the entrance of your word brings light and even understanding unto the simple. As simple folks, we've come tonight to learn at your feet. I make my tongue the pen of a ready writer, and I write the word of spirit even upon the life of man. I declare, O oh God, let your word fulfill the purpose for which it is sent. Make us all better people. In Jesus' name, amen. Passion killers. One of the key things you need to understand in life uh, is that you need to learn to be passionate. Whatever life you choose to live, whatever area of life you choose to live, you believe that's your call, that's your area, that's what God is asking you to pursue after. One thing you must add to purpose, one thing you must add to your goals and your objective and ambition in life uh, is that you must be passionate. You must add passion. Without passion, it will be difficult uh, to live the kind of life God has proposed for you. The creative force behind all great acts, behind all great music, Behind all great work is passion. Great writing, passion. Nothing great is ever fulfilled in life without passion. Nothing great is ever sustained without passion. Passion is what energizes our life. Passion is what gives us fire. Is what gives us zeal. Passion, passion is what makes the impossible possible. I know some people say it can't be done. But if you are passionate enough, it can be done. Impossibility bows are the ruggedness of passion and desire. Passion gives you a reason to wake up every morning and get on your feet, stomp your feet on the ground and say it's going to be a good day. Why? Because you have a passion for living. You believe my life is worth living and you have a zeal for living. Without passion, life becomes boring. It becomes dull. You begin to drive. It becomes monotonous. It becomes a routine. It becomes dull. Recently, I did a video and I... I recorded a video, about a two-minute video, and then I listened to it myself. And then I just said, this is not working. This is not good enough. Why? Because it was passionless. It, it cannot inspire anybody. That tells you that passion is what inspires people. When you see a passionate wedding, a passionate relationship, you know. When you see a passionate business, you know. A passionate businessman, a passionate entrepreneur, you know. Why? Because there is something about them that differentiates them from other people. Allow me at this juncture to define what is passion. What is passion? Passion, number one, is a strong desire for anything. If you have a strong desire for doing something, then we can say you are passionate for that thing. Number two, is a strong or extravagant fondness or enthusiasm. When you have a strong or extravagant fondness or enthusiasm towards something, some people are just music enthusiasts. Some people are football enthusiasts. If you're enthusiastic about something, then you can say you are passionate for that thing. Number three, passion is strongly and barely controllable emotion. When you have emotion that is, you can barely control, then you can say I'm passionate. When some guy sees some ladies, then you will see that the whole sense of reasoning is gone. What's happening there? The passionate emotion starts happening they are with that lady and then they say, say, start speaking. And then even if you slap their face, they are just smiling back at you. <laughs> Why? Because uh, their emotion is just haywire. Why? Because they are before this woman that they are passionate about. Another thing, uh, I, love, I love Acts chapter 1 verse 3. Uh, the Bible says, uh, would Jesus would die would after his passion. He called this his passion. Acts chapter 1 verse 3, the King James Version. When you look at the cross, you, you call it glory. When you look at the cross, you saw the pain. When you look at the cross, you saw things. But when the Bible himself, when the Bible itself describes it, it says Jesus who after his passion. So it was Jesus did not just die. He died because he was passionate about you and I. So Jesus was passionate. As someone has rightly said, passion is hard to measure and difficult to pin down. 
but you know when you have it and you are quite aware when you don't have it. So when someone is passionate, you kind of just know. You know how this guy is passionate. You, you can tell. You may not be able to define it. And even when you are passionate about something, you can tell. Because you can pin it down and say, yes, I'm passionate about that thing. I'm passionate about football. Yes, I'm passionate about church. I'm passionate about God. But when you are not passionate about something, you can also tell. So it's easy you can see it. One day, a man walks up to Jesus and asks him, say, what is the greatest commandment? Jesus said, one important thing you must do. He said to the man, he said, you must love the Lord your God. He said, with all your heart with all your soul, and with all your mind. Listen, Jesus was saying, you need to underline that word after. Jesus was saying, you need to love God passionately. You need to give him all that he has. So passion has to do with your heart. When your heart is in a thing, then you can say you are passionate about that thing. And God does not want us to just love him halfway. He's not interested in our measure. He wants you and I to love him fully. Nothing else matters in life if you don't love God passionately. God actually wants us to love us, love him with all of our heart. All hearted love is what God desires for you and I. I want to read to us Mark chapter 11 verse 30 in the message translation. Jesus said, love the Lord God with all your passion and prayer and intelligence and energy. He said, love the Lord your God with all your passion, with all your prayers, with all intelligence and with all your energy. The Greek word art is what you can also define as the word passion. Now, we started by reading the Passion Translation of Romans chapter 12, verse 11. And the Bible says, be enthusiastic to serve the Lord. Keeping your passion toward him, boiling hot, radiating with the glow of the Holy Ghost, and letting him fill you with excitement as you serve him. From this verse of the scripture, certain things are clear about passion. It means, number one, that passion is enthusiasm. It's boiling hot. Passion is radiating with the glow of the Holy Spirit. And passion also, according to this verse of scripture, is being filled with excitement. God created you with emotions. If God created you with emotions, he wants you to use it. He does not want you to just stay and say, oh, I'm just emotional. No, no, no. Some people say, you know, when you are emotional, you are being kind of, no. God wants you to put emotions to love in him. It's okay to worship God and to cry. It's okay to put your passion into serving God. Some people say you come to church and then you yell and then of course you listen to music and you start shouting and someone says, wow, that's not nice. Of course it's nice, it's okay. God gave you those, that emotion for a reason. You know, people will say that still goes to clubs uh, and then they scream. They go to football, uh, match uh, to, to stadiums or, or to, to a bar where they watch a match and then they shout, go! But those same guys come to church and then they stay calm, collected and it's not all right to shout. Allow me to say to you that God wants you to love him with the whole of your heart. And it's important you are passionate. It's not good to do anything without passion. When you see a singer who lacks passion, you know. You see it. You sense it. When you see a preacher preach and he's not involved, his heart is not in what he's saying, you are not moved. Why? Because you just want the heart to be there. You, when you are in a relationship and someone's heart is not there, you know. So you just want to get out of it. So it's important that you and I understand that passion is essential. Passion is boiling hot. Are you boiling hot for your vision? Are you boiling hot for your goals? Are you boiling hot for that which God has called you to? Don't forget we are speaking on the Involved series. And we are talking about the things you need to do if your life is going to transform, if your life is going to change. And one key element that you need to put in place is that you need to be passionate about that which God has called you to, about your purpose. Whatever it is you believe that this is what God is saying I should do at this time. He might be calling you, sending you forth as an entrepreneur. He might be sending you forth even as a musician into the entertainment world. He might be sending you forth even to lecture in the university. One thing you must do is that you must be passionate about that thing because passion gets things done. The truth is that uh, God wants us to work passionately. I am someone, I'm passionate about music, I'm passionate about nation building, I'm passionate about purpose, I'm passionate about football. And you see, when I'm doing these things, I'm passionate most importantly about God. And when I'm doing these things, nothing else really matters. You see, you must find your niche and you must pursue after your niche with the all of your heart. You can't just be there. It's passion that wakes you up every morning. It's passion that tells you today is worth living. It's passion that tells you that no obstacle is too high. You can win. Why? Because you are passionate about it. Have you heard of the alien balloon? And I like to say this when time I'm preaching about passion. Uh, the alien, alien balloon is uh, a balloon that goes so high 
Uh, and um, sometimes you wonder, how will this balloon come down? Uh, it's going to come down by itself. <laughs> the moment the helium, which is the substance that is in the balloon that makes it fly to that height, uh, is out, the balloon itself comes down. And that's how some Christians are. There's a season in their life they are very passionate. You tell them, oh, it's time to do something. They are so interested. They want to just run. They want to just go. They want to do that thing. But a time comes in their life that nothing else matters anymore. They, they just sit there. Sometimes, the first time they give their life to Jesus, they just want to do Jesus' thing. They just want to pursue after Jesus. They just want to be in church. But a time comes, uh, they don't want to do anything anymore. The first time you caught your vision, the first time you caught your purpose, the first time you caught your dream, you were passionate, you were filled with desire. You just felt, oh my God, I can do this. But after a while, something happens to you. Your passion is deflated. You lose it. And that's why today I'm speaking on passion killers. The things you and I must watch out for. If you are going to live that kind of life uh, that God even desires that you live. I want to talk about the things uh, that would deflate your passion. The things that would not make you become what God wants you to become. And the first thing you need to be uh, that, that causes people to lose their passion. The first killer that you must watch out for is what I call poor, poor self-image. A poor self-image. When a man does not have good self-image, he will not believe in his ability and his God-given grace. Uh, in Exodus, we found Moses. He had a poor self-image. But by the time we got to the end of that book, he was walking out of the palace of Pharaoh with a very high image. What has happened? He had a walk with God. Listen to this. What will transform your image, what will transform the way you see yourself is your relationship with God. If you look at men, men may change their mind concerning you. If you find your image in your job, they can sack you tomorrow. Your image must be in the eternal, in the one who will never change, God himself. The more you believe in your ability, the more passionate you will be. Not everyone will agree with you. Not everyone will like your face. That is a fact of life. Therefore, you must believe in yourself. You must build yourself. You must build your faith in the you. You must understand that if God created you, he must believe in you. Don't forget the Bible told us in Genesis chapter 1 that you are made in the image of God. Therefore, you can't be in the image of God and think poorly about yourself. The first thing you should understand is that if God has called me, or if God has given me this vision, then he will make it come to pass. Don't forget, provision is called for the vision. And provision does not only speak of money. It speaks of all the resource you will need in order to fulfill the vision that God has given you. And then number two, what deflates people's passion, what kills their passion, is what I call unconstructive criticism. Criticism that are not constructive. Every one of us will be criticized. Get ready to be criticized if you are going to become anything in life. But there are criticism that are unjust. Like pain deflates a balloon. Such criticism deflates our passion. Remember the 10 spouse. They were sent forth and they came back. 10 guys deflated the passion of a nation. They thought they cannot do it. Why? Because these 10 people came back and criticized God and criticized Moses and told them that the giants in the land were going to stop them from getting to the land of promise. Sometimes you see people passionate for God and then they start working with certain folks in church and those people say certain things concerning them and then they lose their passion for the things of God or they lose their passion even for their desires. One of the things believers must deliberately banish among them is the critical spirit. I remember a long time ago in ministry, one guy, one chap was in ministry, while in ministry together, training minister, and then a man of God came to him and said, you know, some of you are just in ministry because you can't find a job. It's not that God really called you, you that I'm looking like, it doesn't look like God called you anything. It's because you, don't, you can't find a job. And that was the last time I saw the shine on his face. Sir. He believed what that guy said, and he was deflated. You must be careful of the naysayers. Sir. They will always say you can't, sir. but you must believe in yourself and know that I can because God is the God of all possibilities. Sir. Number three, the attitude of the company you keep. Be careful of the company you keep. Do not mix with the wrong people. Sometimes someone comes sir, with so much zeal, so much passion, and then they get to church, they get to a group, they get to a clan, they get to a group of people, and then they lose their passion for living. What happened? Those guys keep telling them it can't be done. Those guys told them their dream is rubbish. Those guys tarnished their dream and made them lose faith in the God of their vision. 
You must keep faith in God. They begin to give bad tales of their experiences. Allow me to say to you that someone's experience does not define how God will relate with you. You are special to God. God deals with us differently. Because someone did something and failed. Does not mean if you try the same thing, you are going to fail. Because the same God overall is good unto all. Yes, I agree. But I know that there is a time for every season, for every purpose under heaven. That man may have done it in the wrong time. You may be doing it in the right time. So you must believe God and believe what he says. Psalm 55 verse 14. Uh, Bible says, I took, we took sweet counsel together and went to the house of the Lord in company. That means there is a company of people that you can take sweet counsel together. There is also a company of people that their counsels are bitter to the soul. So you must be careful whose counsel you also take. And then number, number four, passion killers uh, and unsupported lifestyle. Many times we are in the mess we are because we do not have supportive systems. Uh, we live alone. We live alone. We like to be lone rangers. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9 to 10 talks about the danger of being alone. You need to understand that you should not live alone. You need supportive systems. God creates and put the solitary in families. There is a reason God puts you in families. So that when the fire of life comes, there are people who are there to help you douse the fire. Quench the fire. Sometimes our vision is quickly taken from us because we don't have people who believe. If you have seen anyone fall out of fellowship with God, the first fall out of fellowship with the brethren. If you fall out of fellowship with the brethren, then it's easy to fall out of fellowship with God. With God. Iron sharpens iron. The Bible says, so a friend sharpens the countenance even of his friend. Proverbs chapter 27 and verse 17. Number five, the reason people lose uh, their passion, the reason their passion is killed, uh, is what you call shifted focus. You must learn to focus. Allow me to say this uh, on your focus. Focus on that which God has called you to. That is the focus God has given you. Focus on your purpose. Focus on your dream. Focus on your desires. Because whatever you focus on becomes bigger. The moment Israel kept looking at the giants, the giant became bigger. But when they kept looking at God, God became bigger. So they knew that the God they have is enough for them. Listen to this. No matter what God is calling you to do, there will always be giants. There will always be hindrances. There will be obstacles on the way. A sure guarantee that you will win is the presence of God. It is not the absence of danger. It is the presence of God. Therefore, you must focus on him. I ask you, what is your purpose in life? Uh, you should tell me what it is in 2012 uh, as it is in 2018. Uh, you should not be shifting your focus. Uh, I ask you, what are you chasing after? You should not be chasing after shadows. Uh, that means you should not say, I have left what I was chasing before. Now I'm chasing something else. Uh, generals of old, the people who have become giants in the land, uh, are people who saw what God wanted them to do and they lock in on it. Uh, you must lo learn to lock in. Uh, like that bulldog, learn to lock in. No shifted focus. When your focus is what God has called you to, impossibility is swallowed up. Can I ask you this evening, what is your affection? What do you want in life? What has God called you for? Ask yourself, has I, have I been changing it? Ask yourself, have I, have I derailed from what God has called me for? Has, have I derailed for what God has called me for? Jesus came with only one reason. Bible told us in Hebrews, uh, in 1 John, I beg your pardon, 1 John 3 and verse 8. For this purpose, the Son of Man was manifested, that he may destroy the works of the devil. Listen to all the miracles, all the teachings, why just side, why side things. Uh, the main reason he came uh, was to destroy the works of the devil. Therefore, if he did not die on the cross, uh, his coming and his coming would have been in vain. Uh, you need to understand there is one reason you live, uh, and you must focus on that one reason. Number six, uh, an unclear purpose. Uh, people often miss out in life, lose their passion for living because their purpose is not clear. Their purpose is not clear. The longer it takes for a man to clarify his purpose, uh, the greater the danger is walking in uh, of losing his purpose. Uh, the easier it gets uh, for you to lose your passion. The easier it gets for you to lose your zeal. Because one of the benefits of knowing your purpose is that you are passionate. You are motivated to achieve it. When a man knows his purpose, 
He knows the reason he's living. He knows what he's going to achieve. Uh, he knows why God has made him. It becomes easier for him uh, to live a life of passion. Anytime you find it difficult, anytime uh, your purpose book and your purpose mind is far from you, then you begin to lose passion. Therefore, it is important that you have a book. Uh, anytime passion is going down, uh, you go to your book and read it again. Uh, you are motivated. You are fired up. Uh, purpose is a never-ending motivator. Purpose is a never-ending motivator. You will keep going on when you know why you are in the race. You will keep going on when you know why you are in the race. Can I ask you why you are in business? Can I ask you why you are in school? Can I ask you why you are in church? Can I ask you why you are a believer? Can I ask you why you do the things you do? When you have a reason for doing them, it becomes easier. Psalms 40 verse 7, 10, 7 Hebrews. Scripture told us, it came. It said, I have come as the reason of me in the volume of the book to do your will, O God. That's what this Bible says. Sir. The word of the Lord is the same today and forever. There must be a reason even for your living also. Number seven, a lack of balance. Many people are doing many things at the same time. And so they get tired. It's easy for you to get tired when your life is cumbersome. I tell people, what exactly are you doing? You are an alignment that is out of shape. When a car is out of alignment, it can't work well. You start having flat tires. You start destroying your tires. You need balance. A lack of balance will lead to you losing your passion. Reverend George used to preach. And he preached messages long time ago. Minister, check your alignment. He also preached a message, debalance. It's very important that our life have a balance. You must live a balanced life. If you do not take care of your health, and you are only praying in tongues and reading your scriptures, a time will come, your lack of health will lead to a lack of passion. Any man that is not in shape cannot be passionate. You must be in shape. You can't look like a rotunda and want to chase the things of God. It's important you understand these simple things. Sir. There are things in life that are essential. You need to keep a balanced life. Sir. There are two sets of people in the world. The givers and the takers. Sir. If you, all you do is to always give sir, and never, is to always uh, give sir, and never take, your life will be in trouble. You give and nobody is feeding you back, it's trouble. If you only take and you also never give, sir, you will be a, what is called in geography, a river misfitter. That's a river that will soon die. Why? Because he never gives. The Dead Sea is called the Dead Sea because he never gives out. Uh, and he has a lot uh, of salt content. Uh, listen, many people are also like that. You must have a place where you learn. You must also have a place where you give. Uh, don't always just listen to Revelation. Try and share some. Don't always think you know all. Uh, try and listen to someone. You need a balanced life. Uh, people die before their time because they never rest. Uh, I was close to death because I was stupid. But a time came that stupid, stupidity left. So these days, I don't do things I used to do anymore. Oh, you can tell us, I sleep two hours a day. I'm a giant kakuya tire. You are shutting down your life. You must live a balanced life. It's quite important. Number eight, an unfulfilled expectation. Many times when desires are not fulfilled, it makes the heart sick. That's what the scripture says. And you see, when, when the heart is sick, there can't be passion in that heart. Some people become Christians because people told them, you know, when you become a Christian, your problem will go away. You will not be sick again. You have all the money. And then they have become Christians and they still find those things in their life. What happened? They lose their emotion. They lose their zeal for God. They lose their passion for the things of God. When people are told that in the church of God is the place of love, and then they get to church and they start hearing people gossiping about them. It's like seeing people envious of them. It's like seeing people jealous about them. Then their passion is deflated. They lose passion. I've got news for you. The church of Christ is not perfect. If you are, then we'll be in heaven by now. I tell people, you find a perfect joy, don't join them. Don't join them. Because the moment you join them, you make the church imperfect. Why? Because you're an imperfect person. Listen, one thing we all need is to gauge our expectation with God's word. Gauge your expectation with God's word. Understand that men will fail. The best of men at their best are still men. 
Some people will say, we will die for you tomorrow. They want to kill you. I've had people who said to me, you know, I believe so much in what God is calling you for. Blah, blah, blah. Amen. Glory to God. And after, after weeks, if they have found the gun, they would have killed me. I have good expectation concerning men. When some people make promises, I look at them and I nod. Nod. Why? Because I know that they can fail. It's only God that gives his word and, his, and he backs his word. Because a life is released immediately, he says a thing. You and I must understand that. One thing, as I close. Another thing, is unresolved conflict. I've seen people leave a church because of conflict. I've seen people take decisions that affected their life and destiny because of conflict. One thing you must be sure of is that in relationships, conflict will happen. In your business, conflict will happen. In your workplace, conflict will happen. In your school, conflict will happen. The question is, what do you do when conflict comes? You must learn to manage conflict. Abraham and Lot had conflict. Abraham called and decided, I am not going to fight with you. I think we need to come, before conflict come, to a point of decision. I am not going to fight you, come with me. I'm going to live a, a life that God wants me to live. Because if you are going to live passionately, then you must learn to resolve conflict quickly. Learn to say sorry. Learn to love. Learn to forgive. I know people who say I've forgiven you, but they will tell you five years after now, the clothes you wore, the handkerchief you were holding, the hair cut on your head, and the kind of lipsticks you use when you say certain things to them five years ago. They will tell you exact time, exact date, exact moment in time, and the space you are in. And yet they say they are forgiven. Forgiveness never remembers. If you really forgive, you will remember and it will not hurt. And you will not keep bringing up even the matter. Have you ever woken up feeling on top of the day? And then you saw your friend. Or you saw, no, not your friend. You saw someone you are fighting with. I mean, you felt like I can do all things. And then you saw this lady you had a fight with. And then suddenly you just look like something happens to your heart. It start racing. It start racing. Start feeling something is wrong somewhere. Why? Because you don't like that guy. You don't like that girl. And then suddenly you became angry. Actually, you prayed. But the moment you saw him, the emotion changed. From passionate, you have become bitter, angry, and you have become resentful. That's what happened. We lose zeal. We lose the vibe for living because we allow people to get to us. One key thing that Jesus had was that he was passionate. Passionate about the cross. Passionate about teaching. Passionate about discipling. Passionate about the things God has called him for. The same thing about Paul. The same thing about the generals of today. No man ever achieved anything not being passionate. The difference between a mediocre sometimes and greatness is passion. I want to encourage you today, no matter what God is calling you to or for, never lose your passion. Keep at it. Believe. Be zealous. Be excited. Because with God, it can happen. Close your eyes one minute and just talk to God. If you have lost your passion, maybe COVID-19 has, has affected you. This was not what you planned for 2020. I know people who are, who, are, who are not interested in living anymore because they have lost money. Because this was not their plan. Some guy was telling me, I should be out of Nigeria by now. By now. He was very angry. I know. I'm sorry you are here. But while you are here, you need to make the best use of your life and your time. Will you talk to God? Will you speak to him? Will you say, Lord, revive me again? Will you say, God, do what only you can do? Do what only you can do in my life. Will you walk in me? Will you walk upon me? Make me passionate again. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your word. Father, we ask, oh God, that you will give us again passion for you. A passion for our call, for the vision you have given us. Transform our life. Make us all better people. In Jesus' name, amen. If you are listening to me and you have not given your life to Jesus, the source of all passion is the Holy Ghost. It's the one that gives a fire into your spirit. It's the one that puts a zeal in you. It's the one that energizes you. It's the one that makes the oil bombs. I'm asking you to start a walk with Jesus. That will transform your experience and your life. 
If you are under the sound of my voice and you've never given your life to Jesus, we would like to give you an opportunity now. Wherever you are, Jesus is calling you home. He's saying, come home. If you are weary, come home. Will you put your hand on your chest wherever you are? Let's just say this prayer together. Making that decision for Jesus. Everlasting Father, thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for my sins. I believe that Jesus is Lord. I confess him as Lord over my life. I ask that Jesus, you will come into my life. Live here, dwell here, fill me with your spirit and make my life all again. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have made that decision for God, I want to say congratulations. We'd like to hear from you. You can send a mail to us at the Energized Church at gmail.com or you can drop a comment at any of the platforms you are hearing us 